Take a team of budding eco-computer scientists. Can they build a smartphone app to help us all live more sustainably? Um, when you're at work or at school, it can remind you to sort of recycle paper because I'm quite conscious of how my school hardly recycles paper when it really, really could. They meet a bunch of geek master computer scientists who agree to help them. The language we're using is Java. Uh, which is an object-oriented language. They discover what technologies and techniques are at the cutting edge of energy-efficient building. But will their app save energy, helping them to live more sustainably? Yeah, so we want to do an app like yours, do you think we should charge? And could it be so good that it makes them into app developer millionaires? The students are all studying science at Camden High School. They have come to Imperial College London. They plan to ask some academics and graduates from the Department of Computing to help them build the Eco App and to work out what it could actually do. I'm hoping the amazing features packed in today's smartphones are going to inspire these guys with some great ways in which we can all be greener. And I really want to excite these guys about coding. They're also meeting a recent graduate from Imperial for a slice of app business inspiration. They will hear from me how we made an app that has sold 350,000 copies on the app store. The Camden team and the academics meet in the senior common room and on Skype to brainstorm ideas. Okay guys, so what can we do for you? Um, we've come here today because we're interested in making an app for smartphones that um, enables people to sort of remember to be carbon conscious. So we want to cre create an app that really helps people make small steps for a big change. So, I mean, have you guys uh, evaluated any apps with a the green theme? Um, we did like the idea of a carbon footprint calculator, and um, as well as like a simple quiz. Uh, so, did you, did you think about the questions your application would ask the user about, about how green his day or her day is? Yeah, maybe involving like travel, so how do you get to school, do you take the bus, do you walk, do you drive? We should try to make the app as interactive as possible. So, uh, for example, we can use uh, tracking by GPS, uh, calculating how much you actually travelled. Yonel is a student at Imperial College and he will be helping the team build the app. Aga is the other mentor and she's in Poland coming in on Skype. Maybe um, in the application we could have like maybe a little mentor, it could be like an animated character that could just be in, maybe in the bottom right of the screen. And also maybe a bat that we're suggesting small steps to make a big change so people um, aren't going to be sort of swamped by it. <laughs> uh, swampy? <laughs> okay, we've got some great ideas. I'm going to send you out to get some more research. Um, you have the use of Aga and Yono and uh, they, they can help you along, especially with the coding, because you'll have to think about how to build these systems. Not daunted by the challenge, the students go in search of ideas for their app and where better than the building research establishment just north of London. You're standing in the middle of our innovation park, which is uh, an opportunity for the building industry to show off uh, the, the new technologies and the new advances in houses and commercial buildings of the future. The ideas that are in here, the technologies that are in here, can be applied to existing buildings too. And I think what your app is going to do is to help people find where they, what those changes are and what they can do to their own houses. Uh, and in fact, what we should do is go inside and have a look and uh, we'll show you some of those. So if you find out what kind of stuff we should include in the quiz, then once you've completed it, it can tell you things that you should change. That's something we definitely need to put in. Yeah. That when people are changing their yeah. light bulbs, to use energy saving ones. We do have a tips area for our app. What would you suggest as like minimal um, changes that are at reasonable prices? The, uh, the simplest, easiest thing to do is actually to go around a house and draft proof it. Because wherever there's a cold draft coming in, the same amount of warm air is going out somewhere else. So just going around and putting cheap draft proofing around the windows, around the letterbox, around the doors and so on, actually will make an enormous improvement very quickly. A lot of our app is fundamentally based at people our age. What sort of little things we can do like at school or here to sort of... Okay, well, how often do you sit in school where it's a sunny day, so the blinds are down and then the lights are turned on? It's, it's simple things like turning lights off. Again, it's behavioural change. Um, if you've got uh, Playstations, Game Boys or whatever and you're not using them, don't just leave them on standby, turn them off. Because when they're running, even just on standby mode, they're still consuming some electricity. And although it's not very much, if you sum all of those things together around a house, there's quite a lot there. It's all good advice, 
But now it's time for real hands-on research into energy-saving light bulbs. And the thermal imaging camera reveals some surprising differences. So everyone has lights in their homes, so that can be something that like, everyone can change about their behaviour. Which um, one did you say was which? That's the halogen um, bulb, that's the LED one. And this one's the one that's sort of environmentally friendly. Uh, the camera's showing that the halogen one on the left, um, especially at the top, is getting up to near sort of 150 degrees wow. Celsius. Um, the LED is still like 22. It's so much more efficient. This one's 50 watts and 6 watts. LEDs are a lot cheaper. So they've got everything going for them. They're cheaper, yeah. they're more efficient, exactly. and they're good for the environment. So there's yeah. no reason why nobody shouldn't use it. Yeah, we yeah. should definitely put it in, in the tips. So do you think we've got enough here today? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, let's go back to Imperial. Full of ideas from their research, the team are back at Imperial to find out the key to successful app design and that all-important question, should they charge money for the app? Okay, so our app aims to make people more aware of being green and eco-friendly. Um, we liked the simplicity of your app, so could you tell us more about that? I believe the key is having a simple application that serves a specific purpose, is designed well and provides entertainment value to the user so that they enjoy using it. Say so, like if it's a really good app and it meets the values of the users, then of course we should um, Absolutely. Charge. I believe that I believe that developers and people who take take part in development should get paid for their efforts. Next stop, it's time to get down to some serious app building with Aga. The app will have three functions. A journey tracker to work out the CO2 emissions you could save by not travelling by car. A quiz to test how green you are. And tips for the day using lots of the ideas from their research about how we can all lead greener lives. So today do we need to kind of discuss what we're thinking graphics wise so we can build on that? I, I think we could start with that so to make it to make the app a bit more colorful and um, you know entertaining because that's one of the most important things that people look at when, when they first open an application it's how it looks and how it feels. Yes exactly. The app is now ready. Time to test it. The Dean is walking to school, using the tracker to see how much CO2 she will have saved. The average family car admits the same amount of CO2 every kilometre as a tree absorbs in one year. I've walked from my house and I've scored three trees on the tracker. Are you sure you mean three, not just one? Well, it works. The app passed Google's demanding technical test and accurately calculates CO2 saved by walking. But what will the Imperial experts think of it? The students are about to find out. You've charged money for your app um, and you've made quite a lot of money and been successful. Do you think we could charge, for example, um, 59p for the app? I think in its current state, I think you have a very good opportunity here to release the app for free and make it social, uh, share with your friends uh, your tips and how much car uh, carbon you're saving. And at the end of the day, this will encourage people in your, in your circles to lower their carbon footprint. And what about the design and the coding? Um, the first thing that I noticed is that its beauty lies in its simplicity. It's very vibrant in terms of colours. Um, it's easy to use, it's intuitive. What's nice about this app is that it reminds you on a periodic basis, uh, gives you a tip of the day, and that reminds you to go and look at the app again and rethink your, your ways of working again. So it's, it's great, well done, you've done a really good job. Did you learn anything during the research? Um, when we were learning about different types of light bulb with uh, the infrared camera, uh, we were really surprised by uh, the amount of energy that a normal halogen light bulb uses compared to sort of the new cleaner LED light bulbs. Ecobug is now available from the Google App Store. It could help you lead a greener, more sustainable life. But will it make these students into app millionaires? Well, it was never really about making money, but saving carbon, it certainly does that.